Yeah, thank you. So I'm Juna Jo, I'm doing PhD in Free University Amsterdam. I'm so glad to have an opportunity to share my challenges during research so using the International Turing Ring Data Bank, which is called ITRDP, records as century long benchmarks for land surface model. Well, as you may know, the, the land surface models mostly have been constrained by short term benchmark, like a few tens of years long, which means uh, uh, currently land surface models like a long-term benchmark for forest ecosystem functioning. The essence of this long-term benchmark is to cause an, an uncertainties in uh, simulated future global carbon stocks as such as do climate projection. So here we came up with the idea that using train width as a benchmark for land surface models. The train records can provide long-term series that can go back to preheat industry period, which is expected to less uh, impact of anthropogenic disturbances. And uh, we, also it can be a very important information to assess assim assimilating the effect of climate change on the carbon cycle. So besides uh, the train wing, there are thousands of train data publicly available. So after all, we expect that the uncertainty uh, in prediction could be reduced uh, with an improved model from a longer constraint. So we can have a thousands of data set and we can have corresponding simulations. So it sounds like that the remaining thing is just comparison. But we all know it's not that much easier. Of course, uh, many researchers have pointed out the storage of metadata and the biases in sampling have limited the use of Turing uh, ITRDB archive. Also, in some points, the model does not reflect the real stand very well. Therefore, uh, today I'd like to uh, present about the evaluating the model, not by just the direct comparison, but more based on the better comprehension in both of observation and simulation. Um, in this presentation, I'll focus on the, our understanding of data, the details of model processes are described in our uh, paper, upcoming. Um, also I present the, uh, this proposed solution for a fair comparison. So first I'd like to show uh, the information that could be isolated from train width. First, the train width value itself. The range of values can give information about growth of trees and the variability of the values can provide information about climate sensitivities of the trees. And the train growth trend usually consists of two parts, fast descending and slow descending part. Well, the almost constant volume of wood should be added to growing trunk with also like over increasing the increasing surface area. So train trend usually have a decreasing trend by size. Uh, the first fast descending trend for young trees is actually mostly affected by this size dependent growth. And the latter slowly descending part, oops, sorry, is part is related to size dependent growth and the endogenous and chronic disturbances because those uh, competition for resources can compensate the size dependent decrease. So to get the train data, the most comprehensive archive publicly shared is ITRDB. ITRDB contains more than 4,000 locations over most fresh biome. And the effort has been made for over 30 years and the first rebuild for the climatology, paleoclimatology communities. Since that, uh, it has been pointed out that the use of ITRDB is limited for estimating stand biomass and stand growth. Here is another archive called the European Biomass Network. European Biomass Network aims to estimate the annual above ground biomass well. So the metadata and the sampling design is very well constrained. Currently 40 sites, uh, 48 data has been collected from the Eurasian region. So pros and cons of both data sets are very obvious. The European Biomass Network, which is well described and well designed, but is collected from limited region. But ITRDB, uh, which uh, has a uh, lack of metadata and uh, has a biases in it, as, but it can cover almost the first biome. So our ambition here is using ITRDB for the first order evaluation of land surface models, uh, drawing advantage from its spatial and temporal depth and also the long time of uh, effort to collect it. 
Uh, so let's look into the challenges in ITRDB. First, I'd like to show how the individual data set in ITRDB is organized. So typical data set and uh, train data sets consists of tens to hundreds of individual training measurement from the same site and same species. And this figure shows the diameter with constructed from the individual um, diameter measure, I mean the training measurement by cumulative sum. And um, individual record may have may have different starting date and ending date, means different length, which means uh, each, each record have a different ages. But you may have recognized this uh, empty area in the figure. Um, ITRDB is mostly accum accumulated by the research for past climate reconstruction. The predominant design in ITRDB targets the larger trees, which are expected to give a longer time series, are thus uh, useful, useful to reconstruct past climate. So um, the, thus the ITRDB is likely to over we present uh, large trees, and this bias makes the ITRDB unsuitable to upscale the tree growth to the larger spatial domain. So in this part, there are no small trees, which should not happen if the trees are randomly selected in the site. And the second challenge comes from the fact that the tree growth rate differs between individuals. Mm. So it did resulting in slow growing and fast growing trees in this within the same cohort. Tree mortality tend to be higher for the larger trees. So the slow growers tend to live longer in the same cohort. So in this red area, no fast growing trees were observed because those would have died off before sampling were taken. Thus these observed green trees is likely to underestimate the mean tree growth of a stand in past, long past centuries uh, compared to combining with this red zone. So aforementioned formation, big tree selection bias and this logo of a survivorship is, are the commonly mentioned biases for ITRDB. And third challenges comes from the difference in the forest structure between model and data. A tree data set often contain cores of individuals with different ages. However, unless the model is uh, individual based, the Simulator output doesn't have this age demographics, which makes the simulation and observation not very comparable. If you get this modeled result, you may think the simulation does not match well the observation well. But if you consider these red areas, which are the trees are now observed, then yeah, the model simulation may be well describing the observed stand. But how can you consider these biases to your comparison? Uh, despite of the despite biases I introduced, information in train width uh, still can be used to uh, benchmark the long term. You know, can be a long term benchmark for all the land, land surface models. First, the model that simulates multiple diameter classes can accommodate this big tree selection bias by comparing the largest output with the observation. If you see this figure. You can see the largest uh, simulator output has the most similar value with the observation. And uh, the model data comparison cannot correct for the slower growth survivorship, but the uh, consistency between model and observed tree can be improved um, by the two measures. First, the data uh, alignment can be adjusted to extract information we want. For example, as I mentioned before, there are like diverse tree growth in the same cohort and the uh, fast growing trees may have died already. So we can see a discrepancy between simulation and observation and for the young stand. However, if we mm, the align the observation by their age, then the discrepancy is filled with the fast growing trees. So by using different time perspective, we can expect different information from it. And after the adjusting the data alignment, we can make one comparison time series by uh, calculating the annual mean max or average. For example, this diameter uh, aligned by the calendar year, the annual average was calculated, but only later decades were used to avoid the bias from slow, I mean, the uh, survived slow growers. So by compiling this one time series that does not exist in the data set, which is marked dotted black line, 
uh, we could extract the information and we can make a comparison between observation and simulation as it shown in the, the distance between them. So we call this compiled one time series as a virtual tree. That is the tree that does not exist in the data, but is constructed from the data in varying ways. The so second solution can be uh, yeah, summarized as compile a virtual tree using observed to train with. So I introduced first information that can be isolated from observation. And then I introduced challenges to compare observation and simulation, which are three victory selection by slow growth survivorship and the difference age structure and can. Two minutes. Two yeah. minutes. yeah, thank you. Considering both challenges and information can be used, by also applying the two solution mentioned before, four benchmarks were built, which consider four complementary aspects of observation, um, size-dependent growth trend, time increment mature trees, time increment, increment of young trees, and extreme growth. Uh, each benchmark contains two metrics with four aspects, so eight targets have been proposed. Um, I will not present all the technical details of a benchmark today, but you already saw one of them from virtual tree, if you're interested in, um, you can check our paper, which is my minor revision, or you can discuss with me or just you can ask me. So rather I today briefly show the verification of the benchmarks. Uh, the potential for big tree selection bias in the ITRDB was investigated using 11 sites from European bias network, which is free from the big tree selection bias. Um, we tested if we're using ITRDB data for evaluating land surface model or kitty, it was resulting in the same conclusion as using the European biomass network. So briefly speaking, um, the uh, benchmark against extreme growth showed the highest confidence and benchmark against the size dependent growth trend and the annual um, increment of weather increment of metric trees was uh, uh, relatively insensitive to big tree selection bias. But care should be taken when using ITID, ITIDB data to benchmark the growth of young trees or as only uh, 50 percent of test cases were consistent. So yeah, we know similarly young trees are quite challenging because of its um, uncertainties and the different behaviors from mature trees. So it may require development of the unbiased data set as from the European Biomass Network. So here are some take home messages. Uh, yeah. And we know there is noise in the ITRDB and we, but we also know there is information in it. And it has advantages in spatial and temporal depth. Uh, we could compromise data and model by uh, extracting the information. We we feel confident. So what we suggest is that ITRD data may not be able to be used for a decimal precise tuning, but it can be used as a first approximation to benchmark the tree growth in land surface model. So yeah, model needs to be adjusted, which is not discussed. Data needs to be post processed. Uh, we, so we use virtual trees to extract the key information. And uh, we could compromise precision and accuracy for a long time series with a good spatial distribution. So yeah, thank you for listening and thank you for organizing this nice workshop and thank all to the also colleagues to build this, this resource. Thanks a lot. <laughs>